Hey everyone. Uh, I just came today to talk a little bit about what I'm doing with these Pendaflex hanging file folders. They're eight and a half by eleven. Um, they're, uh, you know, vintage, and um, I've been cutting off the uh, ends here, right at the end. And you can see I I, I work in a school and I. Last year, at the end of the year, got a um, quite a stash of these. So I've been cutting them off, and I thought I would throw the whole, you know, the whole bit away. But then I took them apart, and I thought, well, these would make interesting elements on a page, you know, maybe on the edge, top or side edge of a paper, um, and even if. It was just one or two. Oh, let's see if I can rip this. Even if it was one or two, it could be, you know, a tab or under a tab. Um, so anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. And um, these came off the inside as well. Uh, so after I cut the piece off, there was still a bit attached to the inside of the file folder. And I, when I peeled that off, it was a thin piece of paper that curls, not this thick piece. So I think that could be an interesting element as well. And I'm saving these because I don't know if they will rust, and if they will, they will be, they will become the rusty bits in my, um, you know, for. Uh, <laughs> for dyeing uh, paper with um, botanicals in the spring or summer. So that's why I'm saving those. So on to what I've been doing with them. You can see I still have a fair number of um, file folders to go through as well. And I've already, I've already cut off probably, I don't know, 50. So, oh yeah, so here's the part where it peels off in a, in a spiral. Um, this, let me come back to this. Here is a file folder that I've cut down to this size, and I'll tell you what size that is. I have a thousand lamps here in my way. Um, so it's about eight and a half tall and six wide and I have a couple of them here um, that I just I thought I would line um, and add papers on the front back and these tuck spots and then I'm going to sew around it and make it into a, a small journal like this so again eight and a half by six for those um, and then this one is actually, oh, where did my ruler go? There it is. <laughs> Can't have gone very far, right? This one is 11 by almost 8, so 7 and 7 and 7 eighths. Um, and it doesn't have any pockets. It won't have any pockets. You can see I've reinforced the spine, and all I did with this was... I used the natural creases here and just folded it there um, where it where it could you know at, where it could expand to I know there are some that are um, they have less expansion and some probably that have more expansion than this so what I'm doing with this is it's going to be my second ephemera folder here's the first one that I made yesterday and I decided because the folders are pretty sturdy, um, it didn't need, and I find uh, folding paper cardstock over and around is very difficult. And I, because this is so tall, there would be just a little bit on the inside. So I used scrapbook paper. And I think I have that. Yes, I do. 
I used a scrapbook paper from this. Uh, I think I got it at Joann's probably. French prep designer paper. Um, so this is going to be the outside of my second journal. This is all from that paper pack. So if you look at this, there's not that much to fold over if I put this on the outside and fold it over to the inside, which I did with this. So this is Tim Holtz uh, cardstock. There are bugs on the other side, and I prefer this side. Um, so I decided to use a paper weight, you know, copy weight paper weight on the outside. And on this one, on my first one, the front and the back don't match, which is fine. I mean, it looks looks cohesive because it came from the same paper, back, pa paper pack. But I thought on the second one, I will use this on the outside and this on the inside. So I'm working on that um, with the file folders. And then also I made these four little journals, which are not complete yet, but they also are made from uh, file folders. And I love it. So I just sewed a uh, uh, graph paper on the inside, front and back covers, um, and then various papers on the inside. Um, so yeah, and then this is black masking tape, which I love. Um, yeah, so I think that might be everything I wanted to tell you about those file folders. But anyway, I'm having fun with file folders, and the fun shall continue. All right. Yep. I think that's it. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. All right. I forgot to say that I will be using cardstock to fortify this um, file folder when I make my next ephemera pack. You can see that it's larger than the um, front, so I'll just have to shave off a little bit here. Um, and I think I'll use it on the inside and the outside of both front and back covers. Um, I, I could use more of this uh, chipboard, but I think the cardstock will be plenty. And I'm using uh, one inch double-sided tape that I bought on Amazon to adhere everything so there's no wet glue involved um, yeah and the only actually the only glue that I used on the first one was because I made the seam on this page right up against the corner here it um, it wanted to come up a little bit I thought I was down a little bit farther uh, but it wasn't so I had to put just a line of art glitter glue there so, all right, that is it. Now you know it all. Okay, bye. All right, I thought I would come back and show you exactly how I'm adhering the <coughs> uh, cardstock to this file folder. And I'm just going to trim off uh, like an eighth of an inch because I decided it was just a tiny bit too long. <coughs> now, I already have it on the front or back cover, inside and outside, and it has made it quite a bit sturdier. It's on the inside of this cover, and I have the score tape ready to go. <clears throat> I just thought I'd show you how I'm doing this. I, I'm sure it's out there somewhere, but this is stuff I've learned, and so just making sure that it's all down very, uh, very well. Peel off one side and and peel the others back just a bit to make it easier to get them off. And so they're going to all come down to about here. Right. So they're all they don't have to be that even. 
And then you start with <clears throat> lining it up on the part that is not sticky because then you can rearrange it if you need to, as you need, and then hold it down very securely and smooth it to the end that is sticky. Then you can lift up the not sticky end, peel off all of the papers, including the last one, and it will be all lined up nicely. Okay, so that's four sides covered, and I will move on to more score tape, as you saw, all around and across the center on all four sides so that I can put on the outside paper and the inside papers. Okay, maybe I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, I have the front or back cover on and nothing on the inside yet. I have more uh, tape on this side ready to peel off and I'll just show you what I'm doing. And I also wanted to tell you that if you, because I'm going to match this up, I'm going to just do, I'm going to do it like this again. Um, on, on this side, I didn't care as much about matching it up. I just wanted to place it, the book, as much in the center as I could, which as you can see, I have twice as much paper on this side as I have on this side, so I didn't do a great job on that, but it is what it is, and that's okay. Um, but I also wanted to tell you that if you, if your tape extends off the page a little bit because you've cut it too long, as I often do, it doesn't matter because once you peel the backing paper off, you can just fold it over onto itself, and it's you know, you don't even know, notice that there's a, an extra layer there. It's really very unnoticeable. Okay, so I'm going to, I decided that this was a, an exact match if I do it this way. So I'm going to try to line this up with a little bit extra. Actually, <clears throat> Put that down. Right, so I've just covered this up because this is loose still and I'm relying on the this part to cover over it. Um, and I'll take care of that. Actually, I think I'll take care of that right now. And I'll show you what I mean by having this, the tape too long. Put my scissors away. Right, there's that, and I'm going to put this, huh, it's not too long. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, leave that there for a minute. All right, so, let's line this up again and make sure I have a pattern, yeah. The pattern lines up this way, but it doesn't line up if I have it this way, does it? Yeah. And I, I don't know if you can see, but I've left, this is a little bit longer than 12 inches. You can see just a faint line, and I'm just using that because this book is so much bigger than, <clears throat> um, you know, other books. So I'm just going to line it up this way, I guess. And I have enough, uh, actually right there, enough right there to grab the tape or have it be grabbed, and because I could move it, uh, I was able to line it up, and now to take off the backing. Let's wiggle do that, and I'll come in here. This one. It helps to have a little bit of nail, which I don't usually have. So now that can get stuck down. And 
think I'm good with just this part for right now. That's good. That whole thing is stuck down. Okay, I've got the corner. <laughs> I have it stuck down here, which is going to make getting in there kind of interesting. So it's a good thing I have. Yeah. I'm going to wait. And I'm going to do this. Like this. And this. And this. Uh, see? Yep, that's good. And then this is the last one. <clears throat> and here we go. All stuck down on that side. And I didn't do this correctly, I think, on the first booklet that I did. I did one side, one outside, and then I went in and I did the inside of that one. And it made it very difficult because I had extra <clears throat> tape that I had to work around and it was kind of kind of messy. So mitering the corner, I hope I was in frame, uh, mitering this corner and this corner and folding all the edges over. And I don't know if you can see but I ripped it here because of this little buckle which it won't matter in the end. So, I have both sides mitered, all sides mitered and folded, all corners mitered, all sides folded. And now I'm ready to add more tape here. So, I will just go all around. Oh, now I'll show you how to... I'm sure I'll get one that is too long. But not this one, because I'm going to go across there, squish it into that fold. Same on this side. Yep. Squish it into the fold and then over the spine. <clears throat> this is the easiest way that I have found to use this tape is to hold it up next to the space that I want it on and then cut. Otherwise it's, it's a lot of guessing and incorrect lengths. Across here. Maybe I'll do extra on this spine right here and show you how that works. Oh, yeah, I'll go right here. So it's it, it's extending over both sides. Can you see that right here? I could just fold it under and use it, but I could also just fold it back on itself. And that is what I will do. Now the other thing is because this extends over, as does this, I'm just going to peel it back before I stick this one down. I think I'm going to. Yes. And then it will be tape on tape. The other thing I love about this is it's really forgiving, so I didn't need to peel that one down. down. I can put it back. I didn't want this video to be too long, but it might be. So here's the other thing I found is that I do really well <clears throat> with not going the entire way across. Stopping short of the corner about an inch or a little bit more so that hmm, that I have to go all the way across on this one so that I don't get too many measurements that are, you know, too short or too long because you really do want coverage on the entire edge. Oops. 
grab one more after this. It's kind of boring to watch people put tape down, isn't it? Okay. All right, so that's good there. So the inside is ready to go. And this is my inside paper. I have to figure out if I want... I think I'll have it like this. I don't think it matters too much. My only concern is that this is so much shorter than this side. But, you know, it's okay. All right, I will do this part first and show you, and then I will do the rest of it off camera. Because again, it's kind of boring. So you can start from either end, whichever end you can start from, I guess. And if it's down, good, that's helpful. All right, so I'm taking this off. And you can see that the tape is stuck over the edge, or it's hanging over the edge. I'm just gonna fold it back on itself. And we'll not even be able to tell when the book is finished. There. And try not to touch it too much because that makes it less sticky. All right, I'm going to do the rest of it off camera, come back when it's all uh, tacked down, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back very quickly just to show you that I've stuck down all four corners. And now I'm going to, I'm going to fold over the edges. And I don't think it matters if you start with the short edges or the long edges. Short edges seem to be easy. So I'm doing that first. Okay. And I did take the tape off both strips in the center um, just because, you know, they I'm going to be folding onto them. So I could have just peeled it back a little bit if I had wanted to do that. Oh, and I took that one off too. <laughs> Now, I, you know, I told you that I didn't use any glue on the last one, but I actually did. And I'm gonna use some on this right here as well. There it is. Um, I used it to adhere the pages inside the book, and you'll see why. I guess I could have used, um, okay, that's all clogged up. I probably could have used this one inch tape, but I, ended up using this uh, art glitter glue so there we go oh, I got a whole bunch there which is okay and I just there's no tape between these two layers of paper so now there is art glitter glue and same on this side And I don't know how, yeah, I just feel like it's more secure if I do that, um, even though I'm going to be putting another paper over it to, uh, you know, a liner on the inside. Okay, that should be good for that. And, and okay, now, now I'm going to line everything again with more tape so that I can adhere the inside pages. I'll be back. All right, I have tape everywhere, on the, uh, all around the edges and down the middle. And I have removed all of the tape, uh, all of the liner on the tape in this area right here. I am now going, I've trimmed these papers at the top to 11 and 7 eighths I think I just wanted it to cover all of the tape and so now I'm going to line it up where I want it on this edge over here before I stick it down I hope that looks good right and I'm gonna have them overlap in the center hmm, those are different colors look at that <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter uh, so anyway, <laughs> I'm going to 
have them overlap in the center and it'll just add strength to the spine. I don't care if I am using up that much paper. All right, so now I'm going to take off all of these uh, outside pieces or the backing from the tape. Sorry if I just bumped the iPad. And also, as you can see, this is not taped down, but it doesn't matter because now that part's taped down and this part will be covering it. So, here we go. Right. And there, that, co that cover is done. I'm actually gonna go see if I can find the match to that because I probably have it. Okay, I'm back. I I was able to find a match. I'm not sure why this one is so brown and these are so pink or red. <clears throat> anyway, um, so now I'm going to take all of these off. so fiddly sometimes, isn't it? Even with nails. And I don't normally have nails because of my profession. So that can go down. I don't have to think about it anymore. This can come off. Right. Now I am going to... Whoops, I should have lined this up before, eh? But that's okay. I think I can do it. All right, I like that. It's a little bit tall up there, but it's going to make a difference. I'm really not sure I'll care. <clears throat> so, I still have all of this, and I will put some tape there. And, uh, and get it stuck down. Yeah, I'll be back. Okay, I decided to figure out where this uh, fold is and I cut off this part. So I folded it over and then I cut on the other side of the fold just so that it would be hidden by the spine, uh, hidden by the pages as I put them in here. Okay, so next step is to put tape in this area and I'll be back. Okay, I have tape covering under this entire piece and I decided to spare you watching me struggle with it so <laughs> I have them all ready to go and here they go and this is down. It's stuck over a little bit. There's a little extra tape here but it'll be fine. Actually I did that on the last one too and I was able to just rub it enough to where it it lifted up. Yeah, see, it's just like, I don't know what it is. It's, um, it's fantastic for this reason and the fact that it's so um, thin. A lot of stick, not too much, uh, you know, bulk. All right, so that's good. All right. Now the next thing is to prepare the pages, and I will do that and come back and I'll explain to you what, how I've done it. All right, so the cover is looking good. Oh, I did trim up top here too because it stuck over just a little bit and it kind of bugged me. So anyway, and I, I'm liking the sturdiness of this. I mean, it's it's not definitely not a hard, uh, hard cover, but it's definitely going to be sturdy enough with the two layers of cardstock on either side of the file folder. So, all right, I'll be back in a minute. Right, for my book, I have cut eight and a half by 11 pages down to seven and three quarters by 10 and three quarters to leave a good margin, uh, you know, around the edges of the of the paper and now um, in my other book I have eight pages but I'm actually going to add a ninth page 
And uh, the way I've done it is, let me just show you. remember who I saw this on but I will link it below if I can remember so what I've done is started right at the fold here and uh, attached it with glue art glitter glue and this is where I'm going to add the ninth page they all are attached like this one right after the other and this is scored at a quarter of an inch but I'm going to flip this one around and attach it right over the top of that one so I will have a ninth one in here. Um, right, so just very quickly uh, using my scoreboard here and add a quarter of an inch. Oopsie. And mountains become valleys, so this gets folded like that. But before you attach them, they need to be sewn, and I will show you that part next. And you're not going to watch me do all of these, so I'll be back. All right, so they're all scored and folded, and uh, they're all going the same way. But they're not going to go like this in the book, so I'm going to flip them over. The next thing to do before you put them into the book is to fit, cut and fit plastic sheet protectors over. And I love that uh, if I cut it down to seven and a half, just under a hair under a seven and a half, it will fit the long way. And then I have been cutting the bottom off. And cutting at three and a half, three and a half, and three, and it fits very nicely. I was using my guillotine cutter for the plastic, but it's, I don't know, it sticks in one particular place. Um, so I have a couple of, mm, let's see if I can find one to show you, a couple of uh, really raggedy, yeah, like right here is... <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's not very smooth. And I should have flipped it over, this one too. Um, I should have flipped it over so it's on the bottom. I did do that on a couple of other places. But see, it's it's raggedy there too. So anyway, um, I... Whoops, whoops, whoops. I would like to avoid that. And I'm going to try to use... Let me just put these back in here. I'm going to try to use my slide cutter by Fiskars. So let's see how that works. Okay, so first thing is <clears throat> cut this off at just a hair under seven and a half. This is an old thing from some other project. So seven and a half, hair under <laughs> Helps if everything is straight, but I don't usually use this. Let's see. Oh, that cuts beautifully. Let's use this. All right, so now I'm just going to cut off the bottom. This is a new blade. Pretty new. I mean, I think I've used it once. All right, now at three and a half. And I tend to have a lot of whatever I accumulate. And so I need big pockets, and that's why I made a big, I'm making a big book. So this one is actually, how tall is that? It's like four, over four. But I'm going to make it at three because that's what fits on my pages. Right, so now, before I continue, I'll just show you that, how these fit on the page. Because I know I'm going to glue this side down like this, I'm going to, I try to stack these up with this, the, the small one at the bottom, 
and I try to also, oh, these, these don't, okay, that's good. Um, when I was using the guillotine cutter, they really stuck together across the cuts. So I'm going to take it to my sewing machine, which is behind me, and I'm going to sew down here and across. And then I will add another one. I'll add the middle one and sew and place it like that. So down and across. And then I'll add the top one and also down and across. So I, I know, I'm sorry, there's a glare. Um, the thing about the uh, page protectors is there's a bit of static cling which kind of helps with keeping it on the paper. I make sure that it's really tight along this edge and I did have a couple of problems like when I got over here but it's not that big a deal. And actually I'm not going to sew over here, sorry. I, I have been doing on this this side. I'm going to sew down here and across on all of them. So the other thing that really helps is to have all the pages going the same way so that you, I, for me anyway, so that I get into a routine and don't have to rethink it every time because that's the kiss of death for me to have to rethink it. So once I get it set up the first time, I'll just do the same thing every time. All right, and I'll be back. Okay, so I, the first one that I started, I did exactly the same way as the previous book which isn't the way I wanted. And I could fold this back the other way, but I'm, I just decided it's the first attempt. So I'll just leave that for the new book. And I did another one and it is correct because it's going to go right over the top of this and it should end up in the fold there perfectly. So here we go. Um, I don't know if you can see the stitching. I did have a slight buckle on the top, um, but otherwise, you know, I, I just don't, I don't even care about the slight buckle. Um, didn't care on the other book, don't care on this one, because it's going to have things stuffed into it, and that buckle might even help. And I know I'm using a lot of glue on this, but it's really okay. I want it to stay there forever and ever or longer. Okay, there's the glue and then I'm just going to match it up here like this. I need to push it down and fold. So, the fold is good. I think it is. And then I'm just, it, this stuff grabs so quickly. I maybe could have shaved off a tiny bit at the edge there, but I still think it'll be okay. Yep, that's fine. So, now this book has nine uh, pages in it. And the second book will also have nine pages in it. I'll do it, them exactly the same way. And the thing I liked about this is they lay so neatly, right? Either way, they just lay so nicely. So, and I, I like the fact that I didn't have to do a lot of thinking about, you know, measuring and the materials I was using. Yeah, I... I am kind of a plain Jane, so I'm not going to decorate it any more than it is. All the decorating is, you know, is saved for later on other journals that I make and using the ephemera inside of these books. So I'll probably come back one last time and show you this one finished. Uh, but, you know, it, it takes a while to takes a while to cut each one of these and I cut them first. I cut each one and then I take it over to the sewing machine and, uh, you know, stitch it onto the paper. So that does take a little while. 
and I have to go out and do a couple of things, so I'll be back later to show you the finished project. Okay?